everyone and welcome. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. You'll be on mute throughout the duration of the webinar and we'll begin promptly at 10 a.m. everybody we're gonna get started hello thank you for joining welcome to our customer exclusive webinar the trifecta effect maximizing b2b connected commerce roi as a reminder you will be on mute throughout the duration of the webinar you can drop your questions in the q a box at the bottom of the screen and we will save some time to answer questions at the end a recording of the webinar will also be sent on demand with that, I will pass it over to Stephanie Fagan, our VP of Customer Success, to kick us off. Stephanie. Thanks, Amanda. I appreciate it. So welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to join us today. So as mentioned, I'm the Vice President of Customer Success here at TradeCentric. My team is responsible for the relationship of all of our customers once they join TradeCentric. Uh, ben and Alex are my team, and I will let them introduce themselves and their roles. Yeah, so hello everyone. I'm Ben Minogue. I'm a customer success manager here at TradeCentric. Uh, I've been here for around a year and a half now, and I've been in the integration space for around five years or so in total. Uh, work with customers all over the world, helping them with punch out through to purchase order and invoice integrations, and really just any other integration needs as well. And yeah, looking forward to being here and chatting with you all. Great. Yeah, so my name is Alex Arreyes. Uh, I'm also part of the customer success team. I'm our onboarding manager here at TradeCentric. Um, so spent quite a bit of time over the years implementing and, and integrating different ERP and, and supply side solutions. So really looking forward to kind of talk through, talking through this with everyone today. Thank you both. So a lot of people here today are familiar with the concept of punch out, what it is and how it all works. It's so really the next steps that we wanted to dive a little bit deeper into today, show what results can be achieved by automating PO and invoicing, and why a business such as yours might want to automate these processes in the first place. Um, we'll also go into what that implementation process looks like. So probably a good place to start would be what is purchase order and invoice automation? How does it even work? Alex, do you want to take this one uh, to get us started? Yes. Absolutely. So as Stephanie mentioned, right, a lot of folks here on the call today are really probably familiar with the punch out solution, right? So as you can see, th this is probably really, really something you've all at least heard talked about, right? We've created this funnel between trade centric and a supplier's e-commerce environment where all of your buyers are able to access your storefront, shop for items like they normally would, bring them back into their procurement platforms and, and then go through any type of approvals and, and authorizations that, that they need to on their side. Typically what comes from that is the question of, well, then, then what happens, right? The, the customer has gotten all of this product information back into their procurement system. And, and now where does that go? Uh, and so, when we talk about connected commerce, you know, we, we start to get deeper into some of these layers to really make it a unified experience. And really the next step beyond the catalog piece is layering in 
some type of purchase order automation, right? So today you might be receiving those by email. You, you might have you know, a method outside of Trade Centric that, that you're utilizing to transmit those, right? But here at, at Trade Centric, we're also able to kind of broaden that funnel to include other documents from your trading partners. Um, your buyers are most likely going to have an option to convert those carts into orders that we can build a similar you know, trade centric to supplier, either e-commerce or ERP type integration that really lets you scale to meet your buyers, right? So trade centric is, I mean, we connect to over 300 platforms on the buy side, uh, I think to date. Um, and so, you know, we've seen a lot of different document types, delivery methods, and, and being system agnostic really helps us to take all of those different transactions and, and funnel them into your platform. Um, and that can be expanded out into the purchase order concept as well. Uh, and then really, there, there's kind of the, the third layer of this, right, is now you've, now you've gotten the order, but then what happens? And similar to kind of the funneling effect coming in, you know, Trade Centric also has the ability to kind of magnify out as well. Um, and that really comes in at the invoicing step, right? So you're, you're taking in these orders, right? You're fulfilling them. They've gone through your, your order management system. You're, you're now looking to get paid by your customer, right? Trade Centric has the ability to support know, standard CXML invoices, IDOCs, EDI exchanges, right? We've, we've even some, seen some buyers ask for flat files re return to them in a file server, right? It's, it, it allows you as the supplier to kind of build your standard and then work with Trade Centric to, to then implement your individual buyer needs um, as they kind of integrate through Trade Centric with, with your platforms on the supply side. Um, and so when we talk about connected commerce from a trade centric perspective, this is really kind of the, the, the vision for that, right? Is we're going from your customer being able to build a requisition, you actually get the order sent back to you and then get paid, right? The, which is probably the most important part on the, on the supply side is actually, Getting, getting that payment back from, from your customers. Um, and so this would be kind of that quote unquote full integration type scenario with this type of workflow in place. Wow, thanks Alex, that was super helpful. I love the visual, I'm definitely a visual person. So I, I appreciate the model um, and it really makes it look simple. I, I definitely can see how automating these processes um, could be a huge time savings for a customer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot to take in, right? And we get really lost in the technical pieces. And I think that's why we really wanted to bring Ben onto the call today was so he can really talk about, you know, he deals a lot with customers that are actively doing this, right? And so just get it, getting more of a feel for the, the business side of this as well. Yeah, definitely. And just to jump in on that as well, Stephanie, you mentioned around those, those huge time savings in, in automating these processes. And that, I would say, is one of the biggest benefits customers see when adopting this automation. And I know we'll dive deeper into that later on in terms of the actual benefits. But first, I would love to just expand on that thought and talk through you know, how much quicker this process is in comparison to a manual process and just talk through that comparison. So a lot of you will be familiar with this process without any automation in place where you've got a buyer. And then when they're ready to send a purchase order, they'll send it through to you via email or they'll upload it to a portal. And then you manually have to take that purchase order, key it into your ERP or e-commerce system, sometimes both in some cases as well. And then when the invoice is processed, you've got to manually match it up with the PO, send it to your buyer via email, or again, upload it to a portal. They then take that invoice, manually key it into their system for approval, match it up, and then make the payment. So even just sort of talking through that process, it's it's a mouthful. You know, you can see there's lots of steps, there's lots of processes, and all of those steps take time because at each point as well, there can be delays because you know you're waiting for that person or next person to 
manually key it into the system or you know waiting for sign off as well whereas that automated process that alex has just gone through there you're, you're essentially reducing all of that because it is literally going from one system directly to another and to the end point that it needs to go through to as well and you're not relying on anyone to, to have to do that that double keying so it really speeds up the process gosh when you spell it out like that, it feels like a very daunting task <laughs> to rely on for people to do it manually. Um, I know personally from speaking to a lot of our customers and then attending a conference last week, automating these processes is a, is a really big talking point these days. Um, and something interesting that a customer shared um, at a meeting I was at a couple weeks ago was looking at this process backwards. So not from you know the purchase order like you guys just talked through, but actually looking at it from the invoice backwards and identifying their buyers that um, send them a huge number of invoices and starting with them. Um, and just thinking about how much time it would save in the process if you started there, not just for the supplier, but also on the buyer side as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's a it is a really great way of thinking about things. And, and we as a team, you know, we encourage customers to take that approach when thinking about automation. Start with the invoice, work your way backwards and see if the solutions are a fit, essentially. Yeah. So in your opinion, what are some of the main reasons that a company would automate these processes? Um, I can obviously you see it's a huge time savings, uh, but what else is there? Yeah, so honestly, I mean, there's there's so many reasons we can go through. Um, on the time saving piece that you mentioned, that is obviously a huge one. And just to put some numbers around that, because I think it's important to do so, we did an ROI study, I think it was a year or so ago now, and customers of ours have seen up to an 80% reduction in order processing, which you know, is a huge amount of time. And putting that into some real numbers as well, we've seen customers reduce their order processing from... 10 minutes in order down to two minutes. And then on the invoicing side as well, we've seen a 75% reduction in invoice management. So the numbers speak for themselves. They're huge numbers where you've got those time savings and it means employees can be freed up to, you know, focus on other tasks and not just these manual processes. And then obviously alongside that, that goes hand in hand is you've got the cost saving element as well. Wow. That's definitely a lot, a lot of good reasons there. Yeah, it, it's interesting, Ben, when, when I think about it, right, like uh, automation, we, we typically think of from a really technical perspective, right? Like we're, we're, we're building that, that plumbing, like in that workflow diagram, right? But there, there's this idea out there that automation is going to be like th this total game changer, which it is, right? But when you think about what that means, it's it's more around freeing up employees, right? So instead of half an hour, 45 minutes a day, copying, pasting values from emails into you know an order management system or um, bring it over into an ERP to document or then bring it into a customer portal, right? I think everyone probably gets so into this cycle of copying and pasting where one of, one of the big values around automation is you, you kind of take it to the next level where it just becomes your time is spent validating, right? Of it's, you're not questioning the data. You're, you're able to, to really look at, okay, this is where it started from, right? This is where this is coming from. Do we still offer those products, right? Like what's the availability on them? Your, your conversation changes a little bit because you're, you're reducing the human error side of this and you're allowing people to focus on actually fulfilling what your, your customers need, right? And so, you know, being able to accelerate the time it, it takes to get an order into your system that then has has ripple effects right of well now if we can flip that order get it out the door more quickly now we can invoice the customer sooner and, and everything moves with a little bit more speed and, and efficiency it can get you to that end goal of of taking a customer through that journey of of getting to the final step of, of fulfilling orders and, and getting those payments processed. 
Yeah, gosh, and, and giving them a good customer experience. I, I totally got sidetracked in my train of thought thinking of the copy and paste and how many times I have copied and pasted multiple different things and it didn't copy and then I pasted the wrong thing and just thinking through like what problems that could lead you down the road. Well, <laughs> so like it's definitely a huge value in automating a process like that. Um, so something else that I started thinking of is if you put all of these things through one tool, that must leave you with a better audit trail. Is that something that your customers, um, it, it's something that's important to them? Yeah, uh, Ben, I know I know you probably deal with this much more kind of as, as customers have, have scaled and grown, right? And they're using, using more on the trade centric side. But from like that technical perspective, we always say, well, yeah, that's why trade centric has our, our portal tool, right? Like we're like it was kind of a purpose-built solution that said, hey, if you're running all these documents through us, like we can connect the dots for you in the background, right? So you're able to see a yeah, purchase order was related to this return cart. An invoice was related to this purchase order. And, and you're able to, to really match things up because you you've integrated through that single platform. And that's that's really the the value add right is you're not going to multiple different systems to to try and connect those dots you know we're we're able to actually match up all those different sessions those different document types and create that relationship um because without going too much into the weeds right each of those transactions kind of gets a tag put on it that that gets referenced throughout the whole process and so it's that that idea of a breadcrumb trail that that lets us pick up and reference all those documents. Gosh, that would have to make life so much easier. I know how many hours are spent trying to figure out where a problem started, where it lies, so that you can fix it. So I love the idea of having a portal where you could see, you know, as you said, that breadcrumb trail through the entire process. Um, that's nice. So as we've been talking through this, we've been talking about a lot of customers that have punch out. Um, along with purchase order and the invoice automation. Do you guys have any customers that want to automate these processes but don't have punch out in place? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, we, we come across that all the time. We've got loads of customers, you know, in that exact scenario. So as we mentioned earlier, and we've kind of mentioned throughout, you know, start from the invoice and work your way backwards. So if you have got a customer that you're invoicing daily, you know, you're receiving lots of purchase orders from, but they don't do punch out, don't necessarily do punch out, then it's 100% worth investigating. So we've got customers of ours who, you know, don't use punch out and we just connect to their ERP system rather than an e-commerce system. So a buyer of theirs, they'll send us a purchase order. We'll pick it up in the middle and we'll send it through to our customer's ERP system. And then we'll just do the same with the invoice, invoice back out. And then that way you can see the, the same results that we've been talking about without having to have that, that punch out piece in place. Oh, that's awesome. Good. Thanks. Thanks. I'm glad I asked the question. Um, so anything else you want to add on, on this part in terms of customer benefits? Yeah. So what I would say, obviously it's, you know, it's very easy for us to, you know, sit here and just throw some figures and throw some stats at you, but we, we do always like sharing a customer story so you can see how it affected a real life customer. And that way, you know, you're not just taking our word for it, but you can see why a customer actually implemented it. And then the results they saw off the back of it as well. So, you know, here at Trade Centric, we work with a variety of suppliers. And then recently, it was the start of this year, we were working with an automotive parts distributor to enable a punch out solution. And as they went live with a high volume buyer in the US, they quickly realized that limiting the connected commerce experience to a punch out catalog, it was also limiting how quickly they could process orders that resulted from the, the high visibility of the catalog. So they implemented a catalog and they were getting, you know, more orders but they were still doing the manual processes. And that really led to a, a conversation around, you know, how can we do this better? How can we make things more efficient? So we, we sat down and we reviewed what was possible for the supplier. And it turns out that their system could receive purchase orders natively and the normal fulfillment process from the web shop was able to be leveraged as well, which was brilliant. And then throughout the testing and the rollout of the purchase order automation, there was a realization of how much time was actually spent manually keying orders and processing through the buyer's procurement portal. And because of an increase in order volume, there was a natural discussion of you know, how that impacted their fulfillment and the accounting teams. 
He had the accounting team that was getting hit with a, an influx of orders that needs to be flipped into invoices and submitted for payment. And the buyer as well, they negotiated net 30 terms for payment. But due to the time it was taking to submit the invoices, oftentimes the actual turnaround from processing an order to, to payment was reaching close to 60 days. So, so double that initial agreed 30-day period. So there's a delta between the order being fulfilled and accounting actually issuing an invoice for payment. By integrating their ERP into the connected commerce process, it allowed the invoices to be generated a lot quicker uh, and automatically delivered to the buyer's procurement system as well. And it resulted in you know, huge time savings due to that increased speed in automation, as well as reduced data entry errors as well. So all of those benefits we've been talking about you know, they saw saw that once they implemented these solutions. But the ultimate benefit for, for this supplier in particular was being able to reduce the time it took them to, to get paid by removing many of those, you know, manual processes as well. Right. Gosh, I love hearing that. Um, real life stories, it really feels like a no-brainer to me. Um, but I'm sure that there are still some customers out there that are hesitant to move forward with all, this automation. Um so what's actually involved in implementing these processes? Maybe, Alex, that's something that that you can talk to us about. Um, and then, Ben, I'll maybe ask you to follow up with, you know, why some customers are, are still hesitant. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think that's like the interesting two-part conversation to this, right? There, there's the technical implementation piece in that. And then to your point, Stephanie, Ben, I can kind of let you tackle what does it look like to actually roll this out Um you know, from a business perspective. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sounds good. I'll let you uh, I'll let you kick things off and then I'll go into the, to the other piece. Yeah, so so for the implementation piece, right, there's there's kind of that first part that, that Ben mentioned on, right? It's, we start the conversation and it's the, the art of the possible, right? Like what, what can we support? Is, is it through e-com? Is, is it through an ERP? Right. We probably need to spend some time looking at your different buyers, what they're able to support from, from a procurement side. Um, it's very much a conversation between Trade Centric and a supplier around hey, what are we able to use in leverage. And so oftentimes, you know, it starts out at, at a high level of what systems are available. Right, we identify probably the, the technical folks that, that need to join the call. We sit down and we really try and define a, a scope, um, document, you know, transaction types, how we're going to get these documents exchanged, really the, the nuts and bolts of what the integration looks like to get that single thread between trade centric and a supplier's platform. Um, then typically what happens is after we've scoped that out, you know, it's then decisions need to be made, right? Are we gonna, are we gonna prioritize this now? Is it a later in the year type thing? Like what is resource availability look like? Um, because obviously, you know, there's always a million initiatives going on and trade centric, right? This is all we do. This is our priority is to make sure that we're getting these set up. But we also realize that we fit into a bigger process. Um, and so, you know, we'll get these identified. We have our project management and delivery team that is going to provide, you know, dedicated resources for this. They're, they're going to work with, with our suppliers to actually deliver the work that, that we've done that technical scoping for. It, and that's going to include, you know, typical progress tracking and making sure that, that we're delivering on all the individual tasks. But when we start talking about these supporting documents, there's a little bit more testing involved than just like a typical catalog, right? So we have test cases that we like to run through, uh, common buying scenarios that, that we like to see, really try and break it before we put it out there for, for a buyer um, to, to use and test. And that's where some of the tools that we have available to us for testing uh, become really critical. And so, you know, being able to, to then take that build, work with our customers, and then bring in the buyers, right? So, like, that buyer engagement piece is really the last step in the process where 
they're actually using their procurement system. They send through an order, they get those invoices back. And, you know, we, we kind of then say, great, let's make this a real thing. I love that. So how, um, how long on average does a project implementation project take? Yeah, that's a really good question. So there is kind of this number that, that we use that, that we hold ourselves to on a trade centric side and it's a hundred calendar days, right? And we like to, like, we like to say calendar days because a, a lot of times it's, well, a hundred days. If we just look at that in business days, that's very different than, you know, saying two and a half to, to three months um, to get this um, actually fully built tested and like with your buyer going into production. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the, the important piece to, to think about is that when, when we talk about timelines from a trade centric perspective, we like to talk about it from the whole picture, right? Oftentimes getting trade centric integrated with the, the suppliers platforms, that, that one-to-one -one relationship is really the, kind of quote unquote easy part, right? Like we've gone through that scoping exercise, we've identified all the methods, um, really the, the long leg of, of that 100 days typically tends to be really buyer dependent, right? Mm -hmm. Of what, like, what do they have in terms of resources to, to test this? Does it include accounting and procurement? Are we bringing in new teams? Um, when when invoicing gets added into the mix, typically someone from your buyer's accounting team is going to want to give their blessing of, hey, this looks good, right? Like we're getting all the information back we expect. Similarly, like you're going to be testing very specific use cases that you might have with those customers. We've seen people do that in weeks. We've also seen people not be able to have testers available for 30 days. Um, it, and so really, you know, buyer engagement and communication is really what either slides things out to that 100 day point or pulls it all back over and says, hey, this is actually more of 60 days. It, and we're, we're out in the wild using this. Um, so it, it definitely, definitely changes based on the relationship with your buyers. Yeah, that's super insightful. Thanks for that additional details. So Ben, let me flip it back over to you. Um, why do you think all companies are not ready to implement and automate these processes? Why are they hesitant? Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting question. And it's one that we talk about a lot as a team here. Um, so I think sometimes, you know, what happens is companies think, you know, why fix, um, fix it if it's not broken? You know, they'd manually be doing purchase orders, and in your voices for years, they're not paying any money for it. Uh, you know, it takes time, but it works. Ultimately, they're getting paid as well, which is fair enough. It works, but it's only, I guess, really once they start diving deeper into it, you say, actually, maybe it's not as efficient as it could be, and you could do things a little bit better. And we've got examples like this happening all the time, but one that I can think of literally happened last week spoke to a customer who said everything was great. You know, we ended up looking into the number of purchase orders they do. And it turns out they're manually reconciling around 3,000 POs a year. And that's just for one buyer as well. At an average of 10 minutes per order. So that's 30,000 minutes a year for one buyer just dealing with all of their, their orders and invoices. So if we cut that by 80%, so taking that figure from the ROI study that we mentioned before, that's saving them 24,000 minutes a year, which is 54 working days. So it's a huge amount of time that can be saved. And that's just for one buyer that they could do that for. They've got a lot of other buyers. So it's, you know, really just when you start looking at things like that, you start identifying actually it's probably worth doing something like this. Another reason for it though, is, you know, they don't necessarily know where to start or they know it would be really beneficial to do, but sometimes I think it might be too expensive. But as I've mentioned a few times, and I will keep bringing it up as well, is the ROI in automating these processes, you know, far outweighs that initial cost. Um, and that's something we'd always recommend a company look into, you know, figure out whether these solutions are, are right for them to implement. Yeah. So are there, you know, if you recommend that they do that, do you have a best practice on how they go about doing that to decide if it's worth the investment? 
Yeah, of course. So what I'd say is the best way really is, is by building a business case. So it, it's something that we can help with here or we can tell you what information you should be looking at to, to build your own. But what you want to identify is, is really a few things. So how many purchase orders and invoices are you doing a year with this buyer? How long does it take for you to sort out those purchase orders and invoices and turn them around? How much is that buyer spending with you as well? So those three points are a, a really good starting point. And each supplier that we talk to will have a different threshold as to, to what makes their buyer be a contender for automation. And that, I guess, is really up to, up to you to decide what that threshold is. What we find is that a lot of our customers say if they're doing 50 invoices a year with a buyer, you know, the buyer is spending over $200,000 a year with them. And then average it's, you know, five to 10 minutes an invoice, just say, then it's it's worth implementing it for that buyer. So what we do is we, we'd recommend a supplier build up a list like that. So how many of their buyers fit into whatever threshold that is? Is, is it one buyer? Is it five? Is it 10? Is it 20? Whatever number that is, and then decide, okay, is this worth impl implementing? It is also worth mentioning as well that those numbers have just been through, changed for each customer. So some customers, I will say, a, a buyer qualifies if they're doing $100,000 a year. Some will say it's $300,000 a year. So that figure really depends on you as a supplier, what you decide. Uh, but we find a lot of customers like to go for that $200,000 a year, 50 invoice approach. Oh, I love that. When you break it down into a simplified list like that, it, it makes a lot of sense. And it, I definitely see how it would vary depending on um, the supplier. Regardless, it's, it's it's a task that probably all customers need to do. Um, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, definitely. And, and one of the things we find is that, you know, when they do that list, a buyer might not be, a, be at a point where they'd say, OK, let's automate these processes. But once you've actually set those guidelines and you put that threshold in place, whatever that is, you can then track it and as they start doing more, decide, okay, they've moved up to this bucket or threshold. Let's look at automating these processes for that buyer. Yeah, that's a lot of sense. Yeah, that, that's really interesting, Ben, when you put it that way, right? Like we talk a lot about the automation when I'm talking with customers, right? It gets kind of very, very process oriented. So it's always interesting to hear that, right? Because when, when we're getting to the point of setting this up, like, it's a lot of engagement type conversations, right? Very, very black and white in, in tactical of if we automate the process, then it means this, right? Like your suppliers are oftentimes competing for kind of line of sight with their customers, right? So, you know, oftentimes the punch out, get your logo into the procurement system, right? So it's, where do you fit on that waffle board? Where like, where do you get that added kind of buyer engagement where people are seeing your logo versus other people's? Mm -hmm. and, and that is kind of waving the flag of, hey, we're trying to make this easier for you, right? We're trying to, to remove barriers. And so a, a lot of times taking away those barriers, like th this case study was kind of a great example of that, like when you were walking me through it of, hey, we took away the barriers, we got that added visibility, making it easier, let them do more, right? So like numbers kind of, of tick up and that's where kind of, I think that business case becomes important that, that you laid out of, of capturing that information. Yeah, but I could definitely see how it's, you know, you would have the thought of build it and they will come. Right. But how do you know if your buyers even have the ability to automate these processes? Yeah, so it's a great, great question. Um, best way would really be to, to ask, you know, have that conversation with your buyer. So we can help you with those questions, with those conversations and what questions to ask and, and who you should be speaking to in order to understand the capabilities. But definitely, you know, having the conversations with the buyer is the best way forward. Um, other thing we can do, though, to help is something called a, a trading partner analysis. So we've connected to thousands of buyers over the years. And if you want to supply us with a list of your trading partners, uh, when I say trading partners, I mean buyers as well, we can cross-check that list against our connections and then provide you with some insight. So who out of them have we connected with before? How many times? What solutions? You know, what systems do they use? And that will really help you identify which of those buyers might be those easier targets to start with if you know they you know done these integrations before with, with other suppliers. 
Right. And then someone can even go a step further and, and help you with a strategy. So if you've got a list of 20 or so, or whatever that number is that might meet that threshold, but you want to put a plan in place of who to roll it out to, we can help you with that plan and put a strategy in place. So who do you want to start with? Like I said, what conversations you should be having? Mm -hmm. uh, in the past as well, what we've done is we've helped our customers with email campaigns, marketing materials. So what I would say is, you know, if you're interested in, in having these conversations, get in touch with your CSM um, and they'll be able to help you with it. We obviously want to make sure you're getting as much value out of your solutions and integrations as possible. So I'd say speak to your CSM or we can, we can help with those conversations. Oh, that's a huge value. Um, so thanks for that. Wow, I really feel like we covered a lot. I was taking notes. So um, it was a short period of time packing a lot of details. So let me just recap quickly what, um, what we discussed today. So we went over purchase order and invoice automation, how it works, the time savings it provides. Um, we referenced an ROI study uh, that says that you can have an 80% reduction in the time that it takes you to process your orders getting that order processing time down from 10 minutes to two minutes, um, as well as a reduction in the number of days that an order actually spends in AR, which gets you paid faster. Um, Alex took us through the value of seeing the entire process, you know, the breadcrumb analogy in our portal. Um, and we discussed, you know, how you can put these processes in place, even if you don't have punch out. Um, ben referenced a great story about a customer experience and the value that they saw when they automated these processes with us. And then Alex took us through what it actually takes to implement the process into your business. Um, and then Ben finally took us through with some suggestions about how you can decide if this is worth the investment to you, um, talking to your buyers, and then, you know, really how Trade Centric can help you with a trading partner analysis, as well as give you strategy on how to get your buyers engaged and, um, you know, and, and really implement this uh, within your community. So packed a lot in. Um, hopefully you guys have some questions for us um, and I'll pass it back to our MC Amanda um, to answer any questions you guys might have. That was great. Thank you all so much. So we do have some questions from the audience. The first question is, what are some challenges organizations face when relying solely on punch out for procurement? Yeah, happy to take that one. So, you know, what I'd say is, is, is punch out's a great first step to take, but it is only one part of the, the overall purchasing process. So you do really need to think about the other components of the process, like purchase orders, like invoicing, and even other message types as well, like ASN, so that's shipping notices or purchase order acknowledgements as well. Uh, you know, without automation in place, those aspects are, are still manual and they can be really time consuming for your customers. And really your goal should be to make it as easy as possible for them to purchase from you. As well, what I'd say is if you're not offering automation and other suppliers are, you don't want to run the risk of you know, your buyer potentially going to another supplier because it's easier than the offer automation. Awesome. All right. We've got another question. Um, do you have an, uh, do you have example videos or material to show our customers what this looks like when it physically happens in their procurement systems? I feel like this is a hurdle for us. I can actually take that one. So we actually have a, a variety of content available. Um, one of the things that we've actually built is uh it's like a punch out demo video, right? So it's one of those resources where, you know, it, it gives you a high level overview. Um, it, it also includes some kind of notes around, here's what you're seeing um, that, that we can share with you. Some of the other resources too that, that I like to call out to folks is um, if you're ever on our tradecentric.com website, we have an entire area dedicated to case studies and different blog posts that we've generated that, that capture a lot of what this looks like. Um, especially when it's a new business process, it can be difficult, right? To understand what your, what your buyers are asking for. Um, so we're always able to, to kind of help paint that picture for you and hopefully provide resources that, that can help educate you and your team 
um, that that group that Ben mentioned that 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 helps with our, our trading partner review. They they actually have an arm of that team that that's dedicated to helping with with enablement resources like that. Right? How how do we educate your teams? How do we get everyone comfortable with the workflows and experiences that your buyers are going through? Awesome. All right, we have another question. You spoke about an ROI study a few slides back. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, sure. Happy to pick that one up. I know I uh, mentioned it quite quite a lot, so I can take that one. So we worked with a, a leading independent research firm called Hobson & Co to dive into the ROI of our B2B connected commerce solutions. Uh, what they did was they surveyed a group of our customers just to understand the value they get from e-procurement integration. Uh, and what they found on average is that businesses pay back the cost of these, you know, integrated solutions in around three months. It's just over three months, that like three and a half months or so, uh, which is, you know, great number. And as well, they generate around five to seven times the ROI in three years as well. So I probably should have covered that in sort of when I was going through because it is great numbers um, and it really just speaks for itself. All right. So we don't have any more questions. So um, thank you all for your insight today. That was really great. Thanks, Stephanie, Ben, and Alex. And thank you to everybody for joining us today. Again, this will be sent on demand. And with that, have a wonderful day. Okay.